Hello, Timberline family. Here I am with my friends, Mark and Sarah Bowstrid. Hey, Mark and Sarah, how are you? Good morning, Good morning. Dave. Ruth and I met you 12 years ago this month when you came here from Hershey, Pennsylvania, and we came here from Washington, D.C., and we've been friends for the past dozen years, and you have added greatly to our lives. And you have some insights that I think I need to hear and maybe others of us need to hear because you both grew up in South Africa during this time in the last part of the 20th century called apartheid. Talk to me, tell me what that was. Apartheid was the brainchild of a professor at one of the universities who felt that different races did better when they were separated. And so they, they cut up South Africa into these different chunks for different races. Unfortunately, this was all fostered upon black folk by the white uh, government. Whites only had the vote. Mm -hmm. And the black folk got all the poor parts of the country, the non-economic viable areas. And so apartheid ended up being a terribly repressive mm -hmm. system which kept down black aspirations and ended up requiring military and police force to, with a brutal hand, enforce it. So you grew up in that, and you're white folk. How did that work? How, how did you deal with this personally? I think from very, very young ages, we were aware of the inequality and the injustices that were taking place around us. It's really interesting as children, we had that perception. Mm -hmm. I think we had and carried a tremendous amount of guilt and shame and dis-ease with how things were playing out within the country. Um, it was a really, really hard time to be growing up with privilege, seeing the disparity and living in a way in a fool's paradise with tremendous opportunities. And you know, Dick, apartheid was successful in keeping white and black folk apart. Mm. Mm. And so it was really only in my first year at university, um, after I'd just come to know the Lord, that I, I interacted with my black peers. Now, they weren't at the same universities because all education was separated, mm. but through the Christian association and movement. Mm. And I realized um, that most of us white folk, many good people, were ignorant about what it was like to be black and living in South Africa. So you started uh, following Jesus and trying to see people through his eyes. Where, where was the church in all this? I think much like in Jesus's times where the ruling authorities and the religious leaders were hand in hand and complicit. Mm. There too was, that was the case in South Africa with one branch of the church. Mm. Um, there were some outspoken voices within that branch but um, definitely they bolstered the ideology. Um, but the church as a whole was gaining voice and, and strength and people were very, very outspoken and really trying to change things and bring about a reform um, through various initiatives. So the church was very, very much at the forefront of change. And when did it really start breaking, if you will? When did resolution and solution start coming? Probably, you know, just before Mandela was released from prison. Mm -hmm. There was a verse that you mm -hmm. told me about that became yeah. a monitor. The church adopted 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Um, if my people call by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways and on. And that was encouraged and prayed fervently by the church. And as individuals, we were encouraged to own our part mm. in growing up and being a part of the system mm. and to face and then corporately as a church to do the same thing. And I think that was tremendously mm. powerful in, the in dismantling a party and bringing about a change. So when humbling happened, healing had a chance. Yeah. When, when people bent their knees, other people no longer had to bend their necks or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. It comes with that same sense, I think, of when we bow our hearts before the Lord, 
good things can start happening. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mark and Sarah. You're wonderful. I like you. Mm -hmm. I'll see you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>